we live, bro. Oh, we shit. Are live. Whoa. Yo, what's First up? First time <laughs> being live. What's up, guys? Um, bro, it's, yeah. been, it's been so long. <laughs> it has been a long All time since we went live. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, get struck cool, and ready. Yeah. Today is a little bit different, you know? Um, today what we, is not like a general talk flow episode, right? You know, we're not going to be talking about business and how to grow and not. Today, what we're going to be talking about is a new tool that Vim has created from V Designs. It's called Formly. Now, many of you guys might have heard it's a multi step form and it's crazy. I'm mean, just going to be going through, <laughs> you know, um, how you know uh going through what it's about you know how you can use it um and you know we're gonna also have a little bit of a tease off one new tool that vim's gonna release soon and right at the end we're also gonna have a live build session you know just to show you exactly how it works and some solutions that you can provide so i think this is gonna be crazy like is is the the, the tool is so sick and nothing like that um else like that in the market at, at the moment at least um and yeah it's gonna be crazy i think vim knows a lot more about it than me because he built it so vim you want to say anything before we start or uh not really i was just a bit nervous <laughs> uh but <laughs> yeah because I, I i'm always like oh what's gonna go wrong something's gonna go wrong but hopefully nothing goes wrong mm -hmm. uh, i'm quite nervous for the live build yeah. but honestly I, I i think yesterday during our webflow meetup there were people asking us like about this form and I didn't want to like sound so cocky and like, oh, it's a good, it's a really cool solution. But honestly, it's quite powerful. Like I don't see anything wrong with it. Maybe I've been looking at it for too long. Uh, but yeah, I'm just excited to finally show this and put it out there and like then move on to, to other things because I've been looking at it for like three months right now. <laughs> and it's just quite boring to look at it again and again. Um, but I'm quite excited to see what people build with this. That That's like one of the biggest things I'm actually looking forward to is actually seeing this on projects um, and people sort of using it and, and saving a lot of time. Um, but yeah, I think before we get to that, I want to just talk about what are the current solutions that exist in Webflow to build a multi-step mm -hmm. form. The, the main one everyone goes to is Typeform. Um, it's just easy to set up. Everything's done for you. It's just drag and drop. But the thing mm -hmm. with Typeform is that every Typeform form looks the same. Like, you know, it's made in Typeform because it, it sort of has the same interaction, same button style. There's nothing customization. There's not a lot of customization you can do. And mm -hmm. you're okay. <laughs> yeah, I, do, I think there's something in my camera. <laughs> yeah, cool. And then there's also like with Typeform, it is a bit pricey. The pricing is quite high for what, 100 submissions. No shade of them. They do good stuff. But a lot of clients and even me personally, I don't want to pay for like a third-party solution given that Webflow gives you you know, a form solution as well as a thousand entries in your CMS plan. Um, and yeah, multi step forms, I think have been around for ever since Webflow was, you know, been alive. And most of people use sliders and tabs, right? So I've built multi step forms before and you just use a slider component and you put different forms inside different slides. But why that doesn't work is that is not an actual way to build a multi step form. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot validate people. Meaning if somebody, you have a required field on slide one, you can go to the slide 10 and and don't know what happened. Like you didn't fill out one of the fields. It's not going to give you errors and all of that. And this mm -hmm. is not a very elegant solution for clients to use or also for yourself if you want to build it. It's just quite annoying to deal with interactions and all of that. Um, another solution is tabs. Works pretty much the same. But again, you have to, it's, it's not a proper solution. It's a, it's a hack. And then finally, it's code, right? If both fails, you use code. But with code is that it takes time. And mm -hmm. it, not a lot not of many developers. people know how to do it. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. So there isn't a solution like this. There's no libraries or anything like that that I know for Webflow that does this. And yeah, this, we try to keep it as easy as possible. Everything works with Webflow. There's no extra code they need to add, just attributes, and it just works. Um, mm -hmm. So I think... Let's 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 get into it, man. Let's yeah, go. Let's, let's, go. let's get into uh, formally oh. now. I think firstly, <laughs> look at this site, man. Refresh this for one second, bro. Look, it's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think guys, yeah. I think you have seen this site go through like 
10 different versions like oh, every man. week i i give you a different version i was i was never yeah, happy yeah i mean we, we jump on a hold and it's like bro i don't like this <laughs> i don't like it i'm like bro it looks fine it looks fine it reiterates it and yeah this is the final version hopefully man hopefully don't change it hopefully no i'm done man i'm done looking at this i'm just trying to put it out there and get it done with but yeah the yeah. Sli- this is the landing page that sort of tells you how to use the solution what are the steps for it and yeah let's let's get into it so again no sliders no tab no code that's the motto of this whole solution and of course add a add the script to your page and then the next step is you add an attribute to your form element so not your form block but just your form element you just give it an attribute called data form multi step easy to remember and then you go to your individual steps so these are your individual webflow form steps so if you look at it this each of it is its own div to each of this you just give it an attribute called data form equals step again very easy to remember you're not going to go to the documentation you just remember it like what do i call it that that's what we want with this mm-hmm. and then now three attributes to three buttons so you have a back button next button and a summit button you just add one attribute which is data form back button btn um then next btn and then finally is your summit button done that's it that five attributes would give you a multi step form you do not need anything else but we're mm-hmm. not going to stop there there's about nine features i think that will you know help you first of all customize it and make it even more powerful than this is so this sort of demo doesn't use anything else it's just the five attributes that we just went through quickly and if you look at it you only can go to each step if you fill the required step so you cannot if it was a slider i could easily go to the next step or the back step but i can't mm-hmm. do with this and i have mm-hmm. to fill it out and also we have validation built in so this is an email form uh, email field and i have to put an actual email to actually get it to go to the next step mm-hmm. and of course we try to re- replicate type forms um enter and press command enter to submit and all of that again all of its power ups that we get to here so first of all navigation if you have a multi step form you need to have you need to show the users how many steps they have otherwise they're not going to fill it um it's going to look like it's endless and is this not good ux so our main priority was to get an automatic progress progress navigation meaning you do not need to duplicate the indicator as many times of steps you have you just need one and the code handles it for you and the way you do it again is you add an attribute to the parent which contains the indicator and you add an attribute to the indicator that's it and if you want to give it a current state just give it a combo class style it however you want and that's it that that's all you need two two attributes and then we then had request from the beta tester beta testers that we um gave uh, early access to and they said oh but i don't want this automatic navigation i want to create my own custom navigation you can again with just one attribute you just give it to all of your um steps and we take care of the code for you again this opens up possibilities because you can pretty much customize how your your navigation looks like now this mm-hmm. is very simple this is more complicated but it's again one attribute and you you're done this intro card is basically um so if i refresh this page an intro card is basically this where before you start a form you maybe want to get uh, a greetings in or some sort of joke or whatever before they start a form uh, or maybe between your form you have a break a space meaning oh thank you for submitting your personal details now let's collect company details or something like that Mm-hmm. Uh, we call them intro cards but you can call it whatever you want again you just got to add this attribute data dash card equals true so if you look at it all of these attributes are just super easy to remember everything mm-hmm. has data form or data card that's it like there's nothing else you need to remember press enter to progress basically <laughs> uh basically what you need to do is just add this attribute and every time you press enter so if i look at this i'm pressing enter on my keyboard and i can just progress through the navigation without needing to click on the button here same thing for um press command enter to submit when you hit command enter it submits the form on webflow 
mm-hmm. and then we have a couple of input input validation a lot more coming out soon but right now um, require an optional fields it's pretty much native to webflow you just need to check that required field on webflow and if it's required people cannot progress to the next step and if it's not they can still go to the next step so for example um, the name field is a required field you cannot go to the next step you have to fill it in um, and then finally email again by default it comes with um, some validation meaning you cannot add numbers in it um, so you cannot have one two three at gmail.com and stuff like that it has to have a proper domain template meaning it has to be at something dot something um, and that dot something also has to have more than two but less than three so dot com dot co dot uk all of that would work but dot p wouldn't work um, so again we try to catch all this um, validation for you so that you don't have to do it yourself finally checkbox so when you have a checkbox field in your form maybe you want um, your user to select at least two options or at least one option. Um, so for that, again, you just give it an attribute to your checkbox, um, the element that has your checkbox in it, and then you just specify how many number of inputs must be checked. So if let's say you have a contact form with um, you know, what services are you looking for, you want somebody to select at least one of it, uh, maybe web design, web flow, custom code, these are the three um, different uh, options you have and you may you want users to check only one you have to give this attribute so that they cannot progress without checking um, nothing and then finally radio inputs um, so if you look at this here I keep refreshing this <laughs> um, but radio inputs basically what, what it means is that sometimes um, you just want the users to progress to the next step as soon as they click on a radio check, uh, a radio input. So for example, is this solution useful? Yes, no. You hit no, it takes you to the next step. You do not have to double click um, to go to the next step. And we also gave you a little bit of control on how long the delay is as well. And finally, there is native interaction scroll into view support, but there is a catch to it. We'll get to, to it a bit later. And then there's a lot more features in the documentation, in the actual documentation. So I would recommend people actually going into this and reading it properly because we cover some of the edge cases, some issues that um, uh, you might run into if you're not using it properly. Uh, but the documentation mm-hmm. is pretty thorough. And finally, I want to give a shout out to Esli. So he's in the live chat right now. He's the developer behind the, the brain, the man behind all of the code and everything. He has been a huge, huge, huge uh, uh, sort of talent that we sort of got uh, from Malaysia yeah. as well, so, you know, hometown. But <laughs> without Eslin, I could not have done any of this. Like, this is all way beyond my capacity as well. So shout out to Esli for his awesome work um, in this multi-step form. But that's not all we have. There's, there is... <laughs> there is just jobs. one... <laughs> <laughs> there is just one more thing, which is conditional logic. So... What I mean by conditional logic is that um, the main selling point of um, Typeform is that users can go to different steps based on what they select. So if let's say you have a contact form and you have web design, web flow development and custom code, you don't want your, your website design budget and your web flow development budget to be the same. So you can have mm-hmm. two different branches, meaning if they select web design, it goes to a different pricing page. And if, and if they select Webflow development, it takes you to a different pricing page. And yeah. that is basically what conditional logic is. And from there... And guys, have... Vim, before you carry on, man, like, I think you showed me this. Um, <laughs> a live demo, you know, yeah. privately. And bro, this is absolutely insane. Like, you can build crazy calculators from this. Like, literally pretty much anything. Um, any, any, yeah. any quiz, yeah. any calculator, like, it makes it super, super powerful. And... I'm definitely going to be using this on my website when it comes out, um, or even perhaps before. And um, yeah, perhaps like before. even one one thing that we can do is like have like a uh, showcase to show like, all the different quizzes people built. Um, yeah. We actually have one coming up. Um, it's going to be a collab, isn't it, with V Designs and Pristine about? Yeah. You know, um, uh, I'm not going to say too much about it. But it's going to be <laughs> like a really cool quiz, something to do with the workflow community. And yeah. that's going to be coming out. And uh, I think a lot of you guys are going to have a lot of fun. This is, um, I think, uh, I think conditional logic would open up so much. 100%, like, man. 
yeah it, it, honestly there is uh, a demo that i want to show after this uh, i think it's the one i showed you before um, yeah. and that shows you what you can actually build with with zero code like the whole thing just relies on attribute and it's super easy to set up but we'll talk about it you know when it, when it goes live um, mm -hmm. mid this month but trust me this plus multi step form is going to open up so much like you can build quizzes you can build games you can you can have contact form that people actually want to click around you can even have um build pricing tables basically if let's say i don't know maybe it's not relevant now but back then webflow had so many different pricings like for so many different things you can actually build something like that where users can select what options they are looking for and it takes you to a specific page that they're looking for um and i think we we do have a client project that uses this where it's a quiz mm -hmm. but it's like a personality quiz and based on what you select it gives you what personality you match and it, all the whole thing is built with no code like you can just yeah. i can't even i can't even explain how easy it is to do it yeah and then finally we are going to you know be releasing a lot more templates down the line the main one that's going to come out is a type from clone uh, which we'll show later um and then there's going to be a user sign up form again i didn't think about this but with webflow membership and logic coming into play multi step forms are going to get so much more in demand because you cannot normal user sign up forms don't convert a lot so a lot of user sign up forms like tinder or whatever apps that you use use multi step because it gets people converting so it gets mm -hmm. people to sign up quite easily mm -hmm. and i didn't even think of this when we were building this but now it just makes sense you know and then finally we are going to be releasing like a coffee quiz basically you select what's your taste and it gives you which coffee brand sort of matches um <laughs> to to your taste and yeah just saying that is insane because now you can your clients it's, you it's, it's almost like ai man it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's, it's not ai but you can you yeah. can upsell to clients me you know if they have different pricings or they have different products you can upsell them mm -hmm. saying oh let's let's build like a quiz where you know you can select what you like mm -hmm. and it takes you to like a, a landing page product. like an extra one sometimes exactly like, yeah. right like you can build mm -hmm. games as well like uh, escape room like even even for agencies rooms. right like marketing agencies like having a quiz there's even collecting data as well that's super useful for agencies yeah. as well so it's not only for like just having fun is also like practically it's useful, be useful with your clients yeah. and stuff yeah. especially for like e-commerce uh, again like imagine yeah, you yeah, work 100%. with a coffee company building a coffee quiz just makes sense because that's what a lot of coffee companies already have and the fact that all of it is built in webflow you don't need anything else is pretty cool um mm -hmm. okay cool now let's let's get into like the nitty gritty stuff um of how it's actually set up <laughs> so this is the type from clone uh, clone clone that we And so is this a live build session or not? Uh no this is just sort of going into just how you would build something like this and then we go okay. to live build you know after maybe a Q&A if anyone has any questions or anything like that uh we can do mm -hmm. a live build after yeah, that. Yeah if you have any questions right. just drop them now just in case you forget and we'll get to them at the end. Yep. So if you look at this, it, it's pretty much replicating a type form form. This is how it looks like. This is how it functions, and this is how it works. Um, and this is gonna go as a clonable soon, like probably end of the week. Um, but yeah, so this is how. And are are you using much... um logic with this or not? No, this one is just just multi step form. Okay. That's it. Like there's no logic built into it. And then if you do want custom indicators, this is how it will set up. we couldn't think of better ways to to do it but definitely so if you look at this you can say I mean, it doesn't sync now because i i made a mistake but you sort of get the idea you got to make it align you got to make sure it aligns with your questions and then it just takes care of it mm -hmm. and then you can go back and it does it as well you can go forward go back um yeah i think that's a quick example and then should i try show the the conditional logic one i think Yeah, 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 let's go. Yeah, let's man. Go. Yeah, let's do it. Ah, oh, I don't, I don't have password protection on it, so people can probably <laughs> get into it. But what the heck? So this is why I think I showed Chase. I sort of tweaked it up a little bit for this uh, demo. Uh, just ignore this ugly design for now. But this whole thing is built with conditional logic, and basically it's a quiz. So you select what questions, uh, just fill out a yes or no, and it gives you, you know, the answer based on. what you select and you can go back let's say oh okay you know what i'm not controlling and then it changes the question now so if you say yes 
see it keeps it keeps going down different branches and then until you get to a to a position where you can click yes and then you get your answer <laughs> so it is all of it it's, it's purely built with no code we just attribute yeah. and you just need to make sure you have a sort of flow chart in drawn up or on figma or something like that mm -hmm. just to get users just so that you know where what questions lead to what answers mm -hmm. But yeah, this is a great example of what you can actually do with conditional yeah. logic. And I think, and I think this is quite one. a simple one because it's just two answers, right? But yeah. it can go a lot more complex than that. You know, um, I think, yeah. yes, you're right. I mean, you need to have it written down somewhere just in case you lose track because it can get a bit tricky. But, you know, it's crazy how like, you know, you can have multiple options and just imagine this just extrapolated like 10 times. Um, you know, yep. it's, it's, you, you can build so many more co complex stuff. So you know what, Vim? Yeah. Why don't um, you know what? Why don't I um take this yeah. quiz and we'll see what answer I get? Okay, cool. Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's uh, are go. you a leader, are you a leader or a follower? Let's go leader. Let's go leader. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> are you controlling? Hmm. No, nah, I wouldn't say I'm controlling. No. Do you like being? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Depends on who the people. Are, are you a talk? Yes, I'm a talkative person. <laughs> Do you, try, Do to you try to be fun? I try to, yeah. I try, I try to be a funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Michael. Okay, I've never watched um, The Office, so I don't. Really oh, okay, know. so he, but, he's um, basically the the boss uh, of the show. The boss. Yeah, he's like a goofball. Yeah, he's like the main the main <laughs> guy. So. Yeah, the main. You, you so I'm, the main I'm, I'm the main character. Come on. Yeah, without him, the show yeah. dies off. So yeah, you you are Michael. Oh, <laughs> that's but cool, yeah, that's cool. again, Guys, I think free, yeah. Just... Feel free to try this out. Do you wanna? Drop the link in the chat, or I was not planning to, but yeah, sure. Let's uh, should I just drop yeah, it on our let's drop the link in the chat? Yep, and then you can yeah, let, let's just drop it on the live chat and then I'll just pin it. Yep, oh, cool. Let me just drop it on live chat. Give me a sec, cool. It should be on the live chat. Um, there we go, yeah. guys. Try it out for yourself, just... and yeah, for a message or comment, what character you guys get, <laughs> just ignore the, the, the bad design, it was just a rough <laughs> test. <laughs> But yeah, I think that sort of covers up a lot of the stuff that I wanted to talk about. Um, shall we open up for Q&A before we go into live build to see how you actually build with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, let's... Um, um, yeah, let's... let's um, we can do it together. So, Vim, you just... Uh, let's go on a live build and then while you're building, yeah, yeah, sure. if anybody has questions, we can just answer. So guys, so if you have any you questions about this, feel free to drop it in the comments and we'll try our best to answer. Yep. Cool. cool. So I yeah, think let's talk, build... talk, talk, talk us through what you're doing, Vim. Go on. Okay. You know what? Let's let's build like a basic contact form. I think that's what a lot of freelancers okay. would use this for. And it's very easy to sell to clients as well. So let's say I am building a contact form for Pristy Digital, right? So let me design it quickly. No client first day or anything like that. It's just uh speed build, basically. <laughs> uh cool. <laughs> let's let's go. So you set up Basically, however you want your form to be set up, drop in a form block, and then, cool. Do you have any inputs that you want? So basically, what what inputs do you usually have on your contact form? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think let's um, let me actually check. So obviously, we have the name, email, yeah, and then I'd like to ask them what services they're interested in. So let's go for those three Ooh. first. So name, email, um, what you know, services are you interested in? Actually, before that, name, mm -hmm. um, name. I have a name, email, the website URL, the company name, but let's just do name and e email for simplicity. Yeah, name, email, we ask them, services. Yeah, what services they're interested in. So we have three options. And then yeah. after that is their budget. The so what project. project bracket are you in? So like 25K, 5 to 10K, 10 to 20K, et cetera. Awesome. Cool. Now, this is how I normally just set it up, make sure the fields are correct. And then, yeah. so for services, you want a checkbox, right? Because you want people to yep. select multiple options. So let's add, let's say three checkboxes. We're going to design it so properly. Jim, but... we got a question. How long has a product been in development? When did you start working on it? Oof, I think it's for two months, two, two and a half months. Um, I remember starting oh, okay. this around June, uh, end of June. And then we spent like one month building it. And then just one month, just testing it, finding bugs, breaking it, uh, doing like Big multiple testing, different etc. versions. Yeah. yeah. So it's been at least at least two and a half to three months working on this one. Nice. Cool. 
Cool. Thank you for and that then, question. Yep. Keep, keep the questions coming. I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Um, and then for budget, let's say radio input, right? You don't want them to select more than one um, budget. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now let's... Uh, live styling is, is annoying, man. <laughs> <laughs> You should have hit, uh, you, you should have taken point the speed will challenge man. This is quite fast. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I was I was practicing for it yesterday. Uh, just building something. Oh, all right. Using, just testing out, so it sort of is in my mind. Um, let's mm -hmm. go quickly. Email. Again, no no styling whatsoever. So just don't mind anything. <laughs> so this is going to be your multi step form, right? So let's just. Mm -hmm. Is oh, gonna be your, that. yeah. See, <laughs> so this is gonna be your form step. I'm gonna just name anything that's important. So form step is basically the div that has your questions in it um, and your inputs in it. So this, if you look at it, it's sort of taking shape. So you have three step, uh, four steps, right? And then mm -hmm. this is your form block, uh, your, your form element. So I'm just gonna call it form, and then you have your form block. We're not gonna use the form block. We're just gonna use. Yeah the form elements. And then with any multi-step form, you would want um, to have buttons. So this could be divs, could be link blocks. Ideally, it's a button, but you could have it as link blocks as well. Um, so you can have a next. And again, this could go anywhere on the site. It doesn't need to be inside the form block. It could be somewhere else on your site and it will still work. The only catch is your submit button has to be within your form block. And I think that's just makes sense um, mm -hmm. and then you can have it back cool what else is there any other catch also you can so have multiple it. yeah you can have uh multiple versions of your go your back and next button so it doesn't need to be mm -hmm. just one iteration you can have a next button inside of each step as well so you know what let's let's do that so let's drop it in here start it properly so you can have it inside of each element as well as outside the element, just as many as you want. There's no limitation to it. Um, and then let's drop in another step and call it pretty, pretty. Oh my God, my spelling. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> ready to submit. And then here you can just drop in your form button. That's what it's called. All right. Give it the same button class cool cool so this sort of gives you a rough idea services um design uh development do you think i can build this in eight minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah man for sure um is there a webflow page for formally yes if you yep. we'll just drop Thanks. it in the comments it's just try formally.com so yeah visit that it's very cool you know so all the information is there, you know, you can sign yeah. up and whatever. All the, the all, a lot of your, your information is here, but we definitely recommend you to go to the actual um, documentation page, which is still password protected. So if you don't have the password, you can't <laughs> enter it. Uh, but after the, after the stream, we are going to just release it to everyone. But the documentation yeah. actually has covers a lot of stuff that we be, that we'll be going through during our live build as well. Mm. man we have nine people watching us that's, that's a lot, yeah, that's that's a lot crazy. Crazy. guys feel free to you know drop a like on the button drop a like on the button yeah drop a like if you feel like um you know um if if, if you're going to be using this and you know if, you, if you're enjoying the stream so far so and if again you know feel free to drop any questions as well yep any questions that you have any, any concerns and then last one let, let's do 100k plus man i'm trying to get 100k Just client bro Okay, well, let's 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 see if it materializes. And now I'm gonna do a box box. But my design thing is like just just crazy, man. I'm like, I just wanna tweak it, but no, that's it. Okay, cool. So we have your okay, cool. form set up. So this has all just been Webflow. Now let's yeah. add all the um, code that you need. So I'm just gonna do it from this page itself. Um, but yeah, just copy the code. Copy and add it of code. To, yeah. Yep, and then. Add it into your before body tag, paste it in, save it. Next to your form block. So let me just zoom in to this element, not your form block, 
to your form div inside your form block, you would go to the attributes and you add, I'm not gonna open up the um, documentation. This is called da data form multi-step. That's it. Perfect. That's done. Next to each of your form step. So this is your form steps. You would need to give an attribute called data form step. That's it. Yeah. And then you just gotta go and repeat it for all of the all of the steps that you have. I know it's a bit annoying, but it saves you a lot of time. <laughs> the reason why we do it is sometimes you don't have step. You might have the button, for example, in there. Uh, so what we didn't want to do is just get all the elements inside a div because again, we want to give you a lot of creative freedom on how to set it up. Mm -hmm. So it is a bit tedious to give each of your step. But what I would recommend doing is do one card, do one of your form step, and then copy paste it multiple times. And then you yeah, say so you it. don't have to re-enter it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should have done it earlier. And guys, but... one thing that I do want to say, yeah. So props to Vim for this is like there was a lot of detail that went into this and and and, and a lot of thinking, especially with with, with the power-ups. You know, for example, like the littlest details, like you know, um, yeah. for example, having a hello um a, a intro card, having a break in between, you know, all of this stuff, it gives so much um uh, what would you call it? Uh, freedom in oh, terms of yeah. you know how 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 you want it to be structured and whatnot. And it's not it's just a couple power ups. It's like seven or eight, bro. So it's, it's like a lot more power up. Yeah. I think that's a lot more than yeah. There's so many. What, so yeah, it's a lot there's more a lot than more what offers, etc. So <laughs> it's, it gives you yeah. a lot of freedom in terms of how you want to style it. And one thing that I found in a lot of these tools, right, is that um it works. Don't get me wrong, but the thing is that sometimes each project is so different. And sometimes, you know, yeah. in one project or one client project, you know, you want to do something a bit unique and then it just yeah. makes the entire tool redundant, right? Because for example, let's say you have a client and they need an intro card or some, for example, another tool, for example, yeah. if it's purely just a multi-step form, you know, and, and they didn't get, you know, uh, too creative in terms of the power-ups and what additional features yeah. you can have, you won't be able to use that tool. That tool just becomes redundant, right? So because we yeah. added, you know, Vim and VDesigns added all of these power-ups and whatnot, this gives you guys so much more control and you know you, you can use it on a lot more projects and it just becomes you know uh um yeah you can use it on a variety of projects so it's not like you're going to use it once um and then yeah. that's it or it's not like you, you can only make one type of form you can make so many different types of forms and couple that with the conditional logic that's coming soon you know the the <laughs> possibilities are literally endless man so yeah Cool. Let, let me finish up. <laughs> I'm like just holding. <laughs> Next. So once you add your form attribute, your each individual step attribute, there's just three attributes left, which is your next button. Again, data form next BTN. It's not button. It's just BTN. Ooh, just 10 viewers, bro. Double two yeah, figures. Bro. Finally. <laughs> Should release more products. Soon. Go, guys, every single one of you better like this video, man. We need 10 likes on this video right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow so depending but yeah so add your next <laughs> button and then to your back button as well just give it an attribute um date dash form let me just paste it in back dash btn and then finally your summit button as well data form um summit dash btn that's it so you only have five attributes you have your script done let's let's just spray it hope it works um, another thing is that you don't need to hide your individual steps on Webflow so that uh, your client or you can always go in and quickly make mm -hmm. changes. Yeah. But it'll be hidden when you go to the publish site. <laughs> okay. Why <laughs> did that? I definitely, this is why I hate life builds, man. I probably spelled something wrong. Uh, data form, multi step. Technical Data issues, form. guys. Give us a sec. I can't even believe. I thought I was so proud of me that I figured it out. <laughs> Data form. Data form multi-step. We have individual. Maybe it's just the buttons. Let me just quickly. Uh, I knew something was gonna go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> nah, okay. When I did it, when I did it yesterday, it was just a spelling mistake. I kept calling it from, like data from instead of ah. data form. Oh man, what's going on? Huh. Do you save? Do you save the code in the? Uh... 
Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Cool. Of course, something definitely goes wrong. I think something to do with the code. Let me quickly see if that works. Sorry about that. If it doesn't work, we'll just go to like <laughs> another example, but uh, it should work. Huh. Oops. Okay, I have no idea why it didn't work. Um, uh, I'm so sorry. But yeah, I, no um, problem, we'll do another live build some, some other time. But let me see if I can just paste in this. Again, this is not what you'll be doing. The code should, should work. But uh, let's see if that works. Now I'm panicking, man. I hate, I hate when this happens. <laughs> but yeah, okay. There, so there, we go, there we go. So there you go. So now you can fill out your form. Why is my next button not working? My God. <laughs> oh, attribute. Uh, attribute was missing. Form next BTN. That's it. Now you publish it. That should work. Now let's drop in a next button inside each of this as well so that we can show them that you can have multiple options. Cool, there you go. Box, just five there attributes. And you have a basic multi-step form sort of setup. Again, design sucks, but you can probably design a lot better <laughs> than I do. Um, but yes. now let's push this live where you can have multiple versions um, of the button. There you mm -hmm. go. So you fill out your name, go next, go your email, go next. Now I can skip all of this because I have not set required to any of the field. But let's quickly go ahead and do this where I make the name required. So let's hit that publish. Now it's not going to let me go next. next. right? Yeah. Yeah. The button uh, would be sort of faded out a little bit so that it, it's, um, yeah. So you cannot go next. Yeah. All your next button will be hidden out. And then you got to you, yeah. Again. There we go. And then you go next. Again, I can make email same as well. So if I put required and I hit publish, that's going to work. Now let's go to check boxes. So let's say you want your client to select one. Wait, way, before right? we get into that, we got a question. Yeah. Where does the form info get sent to native Webflow forms? Can you work with custom back end? Uh, so right now it goes to Webflow. Um, so again, we are not touching any of the form or whatever, it's pretty much what Webflow gives you. Um, so I know you can send form data to HubSpot and all of that using Webflow. All of that should still work the same because we are not hiding anything or we're not putting a lot of custom code to it. It's just pretty much the functionality of checking the input and making you go next. That's it. That's all we do. So whatever Webflow gives you, it should work. And nothing more, nothing less. We're not taking anything away. We're not adding a lot of... Uh, um, any any custom functionality that Webflow doesn't have. It's merely just giving you the sort of a library to build a multi-step form. When you submit it, it just goes to Webflow's backend where it gives you an email notification and you can go to project settings to see the form submission. That's it. That's yeah. Again, just imagine it being a normal form, but with this five attributes and the code, it just turns it into a multi-step form. Yeah. So it, it doesn't mess up with, you know, the back end. The data that exactly. you get will still be the exact same. So yeah, yeah. And then see, I can't if I don't input anything, it's not going to let me go. Um, mm -hmm. But again, another mistake is that this is a plain text. So if I go to email, set it to email, it's going to now check for validation whether the input is an actual email address or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so I cannot just put A B C D and then go next. I have to put an actual email. So let's mm -hmm. see if that works. So if you look at this, it's not going to it's going to it's not going to work. Unless I go to add, it's still not going to work and it works. Once it, it there's, okay. a, there's a sort of template. And then if it's just one, it's not going to go. And you have more than one, it's not going to work. Um, but you can have .co, .uk, that should work. So we sort of try yeah. to catch So it eliminates a lot of spam as well that you do get. Yeah. And we're going to build, um, so if you go to our documentation, there's going to be an attribute where you can add to remove at Gmail emails so that, we get a lot of spam from, you know, at Gmail, like spam yeah. bots and all that. You can block all of at Gmail emails and only get business emails if you're actually serious about your form. Um, so mm -hmm. that's going to be, that's going to be coming soon. Now yeah. let's, 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 at, let's try a, yeah. 
power up like an intro card for example just cool, see, show go. the yeah. people how that works for example yeah cool well, let's create an intro so card again this is just one attribute right that you have to add that literally just you know makes an intro card yeah so this is pretty much uh just the form step that i've duplicated um and i've removed the input so it doesn't need to have an input and then to here you just give the power up attribute and again, you and just an no, additional one, right? So you don't delete data dash form equals step, no, right? No, yeah. Okay. So it is still part of your step. So anything with your with the data form dash step attribute, it's gonna be considered as part of your form. But just because you have data card equals true, it's telling the code that hey, in this step there is no form, so you can allow mm -hmm. users to go next. There's no input, mm -hmm. so you can allow users to go next, and that's it. So now let's keep yeah. that publish. And if you hit refresh, huh? <laughs> Do you spell it right this time? I I probably didn't. Data card equals true, oh, right? That's true. Yeah. Oh man, this is a disaster. <laughs> what did I add here? Yeah, data card equals true. Huh. Oh my god, why is why is this happening to me, man? <laughs> is it something on the I, button, maybe? Uh, it should still work. Uh, or is it cached? Because it's not when... Oh my god, I should have planned for it, man. Data card equals true. I spell it correct, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, uh, so we got a question. Wait, okay. Looks I great. want socials of both the hosts. Can I get it? Yes. Yeah, so uh, my social media Twitter is <laughs> Shay, at Chase Official. Vim is, I think, Vimarlin underscore VJ, right? Yeah, underscore VJ. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, you I want mean, like, to put it on... be in the description. Yeah, we'll just, I'll just put it on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh... So this is cool. Let's give that a refresh. Oh, there you go. There it works. It's just probably some cache issue. So this is using yeah. your yeah. It's probably it didn't load properly, but yep. So now now it works. Just add one attribute. Yeah, now you have like in terms of like you know publishing. Yeah, lower, yeah, yeah. That's fine. But yes, yeah, so that works. Now you have. You can still go back to your uh to, to the intro card as well. Yeah, and um, this is like Typeform also has this right, like welcome yeah. to a form. Are you ready? Whatever. Da, da, da. So and you can have you yeah. can have multiple. Like you can have one mm -hmm. in the beginning, one in the middle, and like, one. Are you ready? Next? Are you really yeah. ready? Ready? Are you really 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 ready? ready? <laughs> and you can you can even have it as at the end, so to make sure uh, mm -hmm. people actually want to submit like, the form. a thank you note, for example, or like next steps or whatever. Like yeah. this. So yeah, there you yeah. go. And then let's do one more. I think one useful one would be, so let's say you're building a quiz or something like that, or, or all your inputs are radio buttons. You don't mm -hmm. want people to sort of click on the answer and then go and Wait, find Sorry, Vim, thing. before we get into that, we've got one more question. Yeah. Looks great, guys. The validation is a great feature. I would love to see an Ajax attribute so we can use it to call an API directly without Webflow redirecting. Vim, cool. Oh. Sure, let me speak to Asli and, and we will try to see what we can do with this. Never heard of that before, but I'm not the technical person. But yeah, thanks for yeah. the input. We'll definitely try to implement that. Sure. And Harsh, um, thank you for your comment about our socials. I just linked it in the comments. So cool. yeah, check us out. Awesome. Cool. And then, yeah, so back to the radio inputs. So for example, if let's say you have a budget, you don't want the client to click on this and then go find the next button to click. And, you ha and let's say if you're building a quiz or something like that with multiple radio inputs, you don't want them to double click every single step, um, which is going to be annoying. So again, here's an attribute that you add to the parent that has your radio inputs. So if you look at this, these are all so What power up are we using here? Right now, we are using the radio input power ups. This one. Okay. Yeah. So you, if you want 
um, users to progress to the next step. Once they select the mm. radio input, you add this attribute to. All oh, right, so the user clicks one less time, right? Just makes it. Not yeah, more exactly. Is this a yeah. lot more uh, user friendly? So you add this attribute to the parent of your radio blocks. So these are all your radio inputs to that parent. You add this attribute where it's data radio skip equals true. And then that's going to let you skip to the next question. Um, let's see if that works. It'd be funny if it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> next. Uh, G Validation is working fine. Yep. Cool. cool. This is fine. Let's pray. Let's pray. There you go. There so now you go. Can you, you see go that, guys? Yeah. But again, now you might say, oh, that's too fast. Like, I don't know what I just clicked on. We yeah. got you covered. Add another attribute here where... You see, this is what I mean. There's so much think, thought that got, went, went into everything, you know. Um, <laughs> shout out to all the beta testers, you know, so... Oh, yeah. This, this, a lot of it, was, a lot of the power-ups came from beta testers who were just saying like, oh, I can't do this. How do I do this? And we just had to add attributes to this. Again, data, radio, delay. Give your delay in milliseconds. So 500 milliseconds is half a second. Give that a publish. So there's always a delay between the click and the next step. Um, mm -hmm. Let's refresh. Oh, this is going to be annoying filling out the form every time. <laughs> cool. Let's go next. Now, if I click on it, it's going to delay for half a second. And it's going to nice. take you back. Yeah, you can notice step. that. Because um, yeah. before, when you didn't do that, it was quite instant. And even I instant, could tell, yeah. oh, what did I click on, you know? But yeah. Um, yeah, we got another question from Christian again. Does the forms need to be on a separate page or can it be embedded in a normal page flow? Would it be cool to see some live examples? Yeah, yeah. so I think, so, um, yeah, you, you can, can add have it as a section, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you can have it in part of your page um, where it still works the same. Um, but there is a catch, which... You know what, let's get into it right now. So there is support mm -hmm. for it to be um, sub, like interaction support, meaning you can have scroll into view interactions um, to, your, to your step, your form step item, and it's going to run an interaction. So for example, if I do it here, if I slide in from bottom, this interaction, let's say I want this to run every time uh, my form input comes up. You can do it. But the catch is it has to be on a separate page. And the reason for that is the code pretty much resets Webflow interactions. Um, oh, it doesn't work now. I think it did work. It did scroll in from It did work and then, and then I messed it up. But so what it does is, um, let me see if I can. Yeah, so this, it uses the Webflow quiz, like our, our attribute as well is built on Webflow. As you can see, there is this sort of slide into view animation. This is native Webflow. Um, scroll into view interactions. Pretty much what I just did here is what I did to each of the steps in this form. But the only catch is it has to be in a page with no interactions. The only interaction should be the scroll into view interaction. And why yeah, is I mean, that? It's because, uh, it's because whenever the interaction, whenever you click on the button, the interaction is destroyed and it's reset. So what happens is that on a normal page, it destroys all your interaction. And then as you scroll, all this interaction starts running again. So that is mm. a limitation that we still haven't figured out how to do. Um, so the only, right now it's not in the documentation. We don't mention it anywhere because we have sort of removed that feature. So if you look on this site, um, in this form, you won't see that scroll interview interaction after the first step. You will only see it um, on the first step. So if you look at it, there's the interaction, that's it. It doesn't repeat every mm -hmm. time the next step, mainly because we removed it because I'm assuming a lot of people would use it on their site and they don't want all the interactions to be reset. Um, mm -hmm. So the earlier version of this site had that bit of code, but the issue is that every time you fill out the form, that confetti sort of pops up, which gets really mm -hmm. annoying and there's no way to around it that we could figure out. So right now, the only interaction it supports is is this sort of fade in, fade out interaction because it's supported by mm. GK. And it's quite simple. And um, I think that will be um, uh, like, other, um, I think that's quite a universal interaction that a lot of people would use, yeah. you know, to, just to keep things yeah. simple. But eventually but, down um, the line, we will we will try to find yeah. a way to bring native interactions to it. Yeah. So um, 
Yeah. But to answer Christian's question, yeah. yeah, you can have it on your normal page. You can have it as a separate page. Both would work the same. It's pretty much anywhere you have a form, you can have this solution up. Yeah. And um, we've got go... another question from Mohammed. Yeah. Will you be creating different types of clonables for this multi-step form? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, we're yeah. going to be creating, you know, some when conditional logic comes out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be creating a bunch of different quizzes for that. One of them is yeah. going to be quite fun for the referral community. Um, but yeah, guys, like when it comes, when, you know, formally gets released, feel free to create your own clonables and whatnot. Um, perhaps, you know, Vim, you know, um, if you're down, you know, perhaps you can feature it in like a, um, as, as, as a yeah, separate page, so and, you know, try for me. Initially, for one, yeah, one, one of the idea was that, or during launch, we were going to get like a few people to create something and put it on the page, but it was very difficult because we were also figuring out, figuring out a lot of the issues with the form. But down the line, I think if we have enough interest and enough people using it, we will definitely create a showcase page yeah. where we showcase what you can actually build with this tool. And especially as mm -hmm. once logic goes out, I think that's gonna that's gonna really kick off things a lot more creative things. Um, but yeah, right sure, now it's sure. it's gonna come with a type form clone. Next week, that's gonna be a user sign up form, and then after that, it's gonna come with a quiz, a coffee quiz, the office quiz. All of that is gonna come out when conditional logic drops. Cool. Uh, let's yeah, so just finish this quickly. So you'll be able to clone and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me let's let's finish this cool. very quickly. Um, another thing that a lot of people would want to use is this thing where when you press enter, press enter yeah. you just want the user to go to the next step. For this, you just need to add an attribute to your form element here. Uh, so mm -hmm. you give it a uh, attribute data enter equals true. And if you want users to submit when they hit command enter. You give data summit equals true to the same, to the nice. same element. Yeah. So you'll have three. I love how like simple the attribute names are. Like before, I think um, <laughs> refocus. Their ones are quite yeah. cool, but their attributes yeah. are so hard to remember, man. <laughs> it's like equals one and two, and I don't know which one is one and which one is two. Yeah, like whatnot. So yeah, yeah. So I this think, is I, like yeah. I like I like how simple you made it. Quite you know logical and simple. Thanks, man. And and again, once you build it once, you don't need the documentation anymore. You just it's yeah. pretty much what would I call it. Um, oh, yeah, I just did it without even... Remember. So if I put... I'm not going to click the next. I hit enter. It goes to the next Nice. Step. And Again, email so shouldn't work, up. right? Uh, it should. Or, so or, if I hit... Okay. If I... Yeah, so any input, I hit enter, it works. I can nice. I can use this. Again, it's all keyboard. I'm not, I'm not touching my mouse. And I can use my keyboard to focus between the checkboxes. And I hit enter goes to the next step i can click on this it goes to the next step and then i can finally submit the form mm -hmm. um, and if you have the uh, this attribute data submit equals true you can just hit command enter and it just submits the form uh, so that's okay. again you don't have to use your mouse at all during the whole process and that also works for this as well so in your in your intro card you can just press um, enter and it takes you to the next step Cool, cool. I think I, um, I think we covered a yeah. lot of it. Do you should we yeah. cover up progress navigation? Yeah, let's do that, and then we can call it a day. And um, cool. Yeah, I man, think that that should be like everyone else very to try cool. out. Yeah, yeah, man, I can't wait. Um, I think the code is a bit broken, but I'll definitely sort of fix it. Before <laughs> yeah, sorry before about that, guys. Out. You know, is I mean, first time releasing a tool at this oh, level, man. so you gotta expect some. Yeah. Some uh, yeah. hurdles along the way, but it's fine. Once you try it out, everything will work perfectly. So, yeah, yeah. And then um, cool. Mohammed asked a question. Would love both of your LinkedIn's for sure, man. Yeah, I just linked it inside of the comments. So make sure to drop us a connection, and we'll connect back with you. So cool. now let's build. Finally, let's build the progress indicator, um, which is this sort of line that you want people to know which step they are on. Yeah. Right. Um, also, I forgot to mention there is another power up that's not on the landing page, but it's in the documentation, which is so I don't know whether you noticed this, where you can actually show yeah people. I noticed that yeah yeah so all of that again is power up two two attributes one for this and one for this, and that's it mm -hmm. it calculates how many steps you have, and it calculates which step you are on right now and nice that would update as you're, as you're clicking through. And um, you can add that attribute to the text band, right? 
Yeah, yeah, text, yeah, text pen or text block, nice. wherever you, wherever you drop your text in, pa paragraphs as well. Um, nice. Cool. And then, yeah, let's build like the basic automatic progress form. I am just going to put it up here. And this, this doesn't have to be inside the form, does it? Or No, it could be literally up anywhere on your, on your page. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm just going to stick it to the top. I am going to drop. So this is going to be your progress wrapper. I'm just going to call it progress wrapper. Inside here, you would want to drop in a div, call it progress indicator. It doesn't matter what you call it um, mm -hmm. because it's not class. I'm just going to call it progress in and style it. So this is your default style. So meaning this is when it's not active. So I'm just going to give it this opacity uh, of like 10%. And then what I would recommend is adding a flex box inside your progress wrapper so that it keeps it um, all tidy up. And then in to this div, you I normally do this where it just grows to the full length. What it does is as you keep adding more, it's gonna be all evenly spaced up, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it just looks cleaner, and just it, you you don't have to calculate how many. Um, uh, what am I saying? Yeah, you don't have to calculate how many steps you have. You just gotta mm -hmm. add one. Who cool. and then I'm gonna duplicate this, copy and paste. I'm going to add a current class and I'm going to give this white. So it's going to be white. So I'm going to have two divs. One is the default state. Mm -hmm. One is the current state. Now what I do here is in your progress wrapper, the parent that has your indicators, give it this attribute, whereas data form equals progress, right? So data form equals progress. And then to your one of your indicator so is this one with the combo class or the one without the combo class whichever um, i think without the combo class would work better because then you know which is your default state mm -hmm. give it data form equals progress indicator so with a dash it's not one word it's two words with a dash that's it you hit that publish you don't have to delete it you can leave you can put 10 inside and it just all on, on the actual site, it's only going to be populated with the number of steps you have. So if I hit nice. next, as you can see, was, uh, and if you go back, it just removes it as well. And nice. to make it look prettier, you can add transitions, CSS transitions here. Ooh, I was just going to say that, would it, you know, um, is there a way to make it a lot smoother? Yeah, you can. So you can add CSS transitions for the color to sort of fade in nicely. Um, again, we haven't explored anything, but you can even sort of maybe make it grow to make it look like it's, a, mm -hmm. it's an actual line. All of that is possible. And in case if you do want it, let's let's quickly cover one more. I think we're almost there. Mm -hmm. Let's say you want to give it custom titles inside. So let's say I want to call the first one, hello, um, to give them an idea of the whole process. So this will be useful um, if you are building a user sign up form where you are going to be collecting different data so you're going to call it name so that people have an overview of what they're filling out mm -hmm. what other steps that they have so i can call all of this email services and finally budget cool so now this is custom indicators meaning uh, you cannot use the same attributes you use for automatic progress navigation for this is simple you only need one attribute so mm -hmm. for this purpose, remove all the attributes that you just added. Um, and you just give this custom progress indicator, just one attribute to, to each of your ind individual indicators. So I'm going to call it data form custom progress indicator. Oh man, I should have. <laughs> uh, but okay. oh, actually it's not that bad. It's just custom dash progress dash indicator. So you can just go and quickly, I'm just going to quickly copy paste it. And I think, well, shouldn't you change the text color? Because when it's current, the background yeah. is also white, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you caught that. So you do <laughs> that. And then add your combo class to one of your element. And then you can just go and change the text color. I'm just going to call it black. Right. You can leave it as is. Nice. Um, so make sure your one of your class has the current. Because otherwise, when you clear up, you don't want it to disappear. Um, so we have mm -hmm. to catch for that bug as well. 
Um, and then let's see if that works. Oh, I think you said yeah because um, uh, what did I do wrong here? Uh, I must. I... Oh, sorry. You have to remove the data progress indicator. Yeah. So the only attribute you need to add is to your individual indicator. You do not need to add it to the parent. Whereas when you're using the automatic one, you got to add to the parent. Uh, so that yeah, does this. Yeah, because then it calculates it, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if oh, wrong page, if you refresh this, there you go. There you go. The hell. <laughs> Sorry, let me just remove that. Oh, okay. Another thing is that your number of steps that you have should be equal to the number of um, individual indicators you have. Almost missed it. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, but here I only have five. So it's not going to work. So I have to copy, paste in one more. So let's copy that, paste it in here. And then I'm going to call it, call this. Submit. Submit. Yeah. So that should work. So why this didn't work is because it's, it's just confused in the number of steps you have. What the hell? <laughs> oh my God, it's embarrassing. Uh, I really planned for this properly, but let's see if that works. Oh, what the hell? Did I even add the correct? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so again, I forgot to add the indicator. So you have to add this attribute. So right now, only two elements have the attribute. So that's why it's going to that. Um, mm -hmm. Let's quickly fix that. Maybe this is this. I don't, yeah, because oh, the thing with attributes is you have to press enter, otherwise it doesn't do it. Ah, right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe this, this is why live builds are useful because you actually see people making <laughs> so much mistakes and they can still keep your current attributes. That's not going to. There we go. No, this is going to work. Bro, we, have, we still have seven people watching. That's, in, that's insane, man. <laughs> Let's refresh this. There you go. There you go. Box. So you know. this is all up and yep. So if you if let's say you're not putting it and you press enter, it's gonna throw an error. Um and that would work even if uh let's even if your input is empty. So this two don't have required inputs, so you can skip uh both of them. And then when you hit summit, it's just gonna summit. So that's it. Nice. So you, I, you pretty much got your basic multi-step form with you know without writing a single line of code. Um, that's powerful, man. Crazy, man. Yeah. That was the live build session. I, I think we already had a build. bunch of questions. <laughs> so if you guys okay, have any cool. more questions, let us know. Cool, man. But man, I'm, I'm actually sweating. This is, this is stressful. Man. Live <laughs> builds are just... <laughs> yeah. Cool. I think we're done with the live build, right, Vim? So... Um, yep. If anyone has any questions, let us know. Nice, guys. Awesome. So if anyone has any questions, just drop it in the chat. Meanwhile, we'll just give a little outro. Um, I think we can honestly make multi-step form just like type form with this. Yeah, 100%. Okay. That's is literally the goal. So, um, yeah. yeah, just a little you disclaimer. Pick, yeah. There were a few kind of issues. That's the problem with live build, right? Because you, yeah. you forget a lot of stuff. <laughs> as long as yeah. you follow the steps correctly in the documentation, everything will yes. be fine. And so, just um, ignore the... The code is a bit broken, and I'll definitely fix it before uh, before we end the live yeah. stream. Um, but yeah, excited to see how people use it. Um, mm -hmm. Feel free to go to tryformly.com. Check out the site. A lot of effort went into this as well. Uh, <laughs> yep. I was just excited to see what people build. And if you do build something cool with it, tweet at us. Both of us, either of us, just tweet at us. Yeah. And and we'll get to it. And yeah, we'll make sure to you know read to you or you know feature you. If you have any questions as well, just make sure you reach out to Vim. And yeah, um, yeah, we'll get anytime. So, sure. um, let me quickly share my screen. So that support what what we do is we have a new Slack channel for just support, um, for the products that we're going to be building. So if you're and interested, you just drop that link in the YouTube comments oh, yep, sure. so people can. Cool. That in. So this is the Slack channel support oh man even this is glitching yeah i think somebody mentioned that the slack channel wasn't working oh okay YouTube i'm sorry comments. i think it's the full yeah, stop so there you go sorry just 
Um, the doc page should go up as soon as we are we are done with the live stream. Um, the doc page should be done. Uh, but Triformly has pretty much all the attributes that you guys are looking for. So just head over to triformly.com and yeah. And in case if you don't have Slack, we don't use Slack. We do have a support email that you can um email to, as well as some links that you can follow us. If you like this, you can, you know. Buy us a cup of coffee, <laughs> donate like five bucks. Uh, and I think I wanted to mention it that so many people asked whether is this going to be a paid tool. I was this close to making it a paid tool, like I was gonna put like a five pound or like five dollar monthly fee behind it. But honestly, I just feel like it's it's more in the long term, and I just want people to use this, and it's sort of a good marketing thing for us. Uh, so it's gonna be free. Um, but if you want to contribute, uh, happy to take your money anytime. <laughs> awesome guys this is completely free man like you heard it so yeah yeah, i think that wraps up the stream i think we went through a lot of stuff we went through what is about how we can provide a bunch of different solutions to you know um i don't think there's any other solution out there so yeah we just walked through you know gave a deep dive into formally um gave a live build session as well so you know exactly how it works and Mm -hmm. also one more thing about conditional logic so um yeah guys if you enjoyed this let us know in the comments uh, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the post notification button for any, to, so you do not miss out any um, future uploads that we have. So um, yeah, yeah if guys, you have any questions? Thank you very yeah, much for feel watching. free to. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching. But if you have any, guys, have any questions or anything like that, feel free to um, contact any of us. We'd be happy to help. Yeah, excited, excited to uh, see what you guys built. So whatever you built, make sure you tweet about it, tag us, and we'll retweet you and feature feature you hopefully in the new Reflow, uh, the uh, formerly showcase. The showcase. That we'll be soon. Yep. But um, yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, man.